hi, thanks for tuning in. This is a weekend review of the S&P 500 and some of the other stocks that I'm looking at right now. Uh, so far, uh, we closed Friday with a doji uh, extended from SMA 10, extended from EMA 5, uh, but certainly getting the structure of another five wave impulse move higher. This definitely looks like what we have in the making. Um, somewhere up to this sell zone you know we can use this fibonacci extension tool to start to give us some indicators of where we would look for a wave three to end uh, we would expect at minimum to hit 425 uh, but as you can see wave three if this does get intense could even end somewhere around 467 so I'm not going to guess. We're just going to follow the trend. We're going to read the candlesticks as they come in one day at a time uh, and let the moving averages and price candle action tell us uh, when we are uh, reversing or if we reverse at all. Because right now the trend is up and there's no reason to fight that. Um, all the moving averages are where they need to be. You know, Is it extended from SMA 10? Sure. So what does that mean? A pullback into 411 is a buy to start the week. That's about it. You know, you want to tag the 20, even better. The weekly is, you know, close at high on week, uh, three weeks in a row of going higher, and the PPO is, is crossing higher. So there's no way to look at this uh, other than it's bullish. You need to be long. Um, when we have a reversal, I'll let you know. But uh, as of now, closing at high on week, high on month, high on year is bullish. Let's take a look at the financials. Same setup here. You know, I was looking for maybe a little ABC pullback. We didn't get it, right? Every dip we get is just bought right up. There are no uh, ABC corrections here, right? We just get that instead of getting something like that. They just keep going higher, and this is a result of the supply-demand imbalance, right? Uh, you know, financials essentially haven't done anything since 2018. In 2018, they were 30 bucks. Right now, they're 35. So if you go back, you know, a total of three years, you're talking about 17% appreciation. It may seem like they've done a lot since the November low, and they have. They're up 52%. Right? This is an index. This is a spider select fund ETF that's up 52% in the last seven months. Uh, there will be a correction, right? From where? Who knows? Uh, right now, the PPO is going sideways. So that does tell me that the trend is kind of flattening out. Um, but, you know, above all the moving averages, they're sloping up. We're going higher. There's no reason to short XLF yet. You know, we closed at all time highs. This is bullish. Uh, the daily chart, it doesn't really have a clear trend right now. Um, I do have a five wave count up. As long as we continue to close above 35.29, there's no reason to be short. Um, and the PPO cross did happen again here. So bulls are back in charge. Let's take a look at XLE below the 50, really in a balance area and haven't done much um, going back to February. So we've got about two months of sideways action, you know, possible little head and shoulders here if she starts to fall down. Uh, regardless, we're only going down into 42 to $45 zone. That would be a strong buy for me. Um, but the way that we play these balance areas is, is simple. You know, Within the balance area, we just range trade. We use horizontal price levels to uh, buy and sell against. When we close below 47.16, it triggers this profit target. Somewhere down here around 43.60. So the way I would look at this, and that's really just doubling the area. So if we lose 47.16 in XLE, 
expect a, a drop down to 43, 44, 45 area, and that would be a strong buy. Within the context of an uptrend, the PPO has reset to the zero line, which is what we want to see. But the question though is, is when they do ultimately curl and go back up, because things won't go down forever, they won't go sideways forever, they will oscillate back up and down. When she does go back up, the question will be, does she set a higher low relative to this negative five value area down here? Um, and this trend line is where we'll be looking to add back the ExxonMobil and the other uh, oil names that we were playing. Uh, the other sector that we like to look at and follow every day is uh, the Qs. These are the strongest uh, names in the market. They have been the strongest names in the market for a decade. Okay. I don't know why anyone would want to bet against this trend, but this is a very strong trend. Um, when will it reverse? When will we top? Who knows? For now, we have just another higher low and another higher high. So the trend is intact. The bulls you know, could take a breather, uh, let price come all the way back down to 297.55, set a higher low, and then set another higher high. And, uh, you know, what would end up happening is this could ultimately be some type of broadening formation uh, over time, you know, that plays out uh, in a topping pattern. I'm not saying we're topping, I'm saying that's what it would look like if we were. Um, you know, and you would get something like this. Uh, and that whole time, the PPO blue line would come back down here to the zero line, which is really ultimately the best time to buy the Qs and just never sell. Just whenever the momentum indicator is back at the zero line, wherever price is, is generally a good buy. And we've got that rule of thumb going back a decade. So, um, I was a buyer of the Qs back here. I did sell some at all time highs. That was my trade. Uh, I traded TQQQ um, and that trade was up about 35%. So we were selling some last week, uh, looking to buy back when we do come back into uh, uh, probably the 325 to 330 year. If we're given a dip into the 20, that's where we're looking to add. Okay, so whenever that happens. So what I love about TrendSpider is we can sit here and set that alert and just do QQQ SMA 20 buy alert. Let this stay in the system for 30 days. And if it tags the 20 in the next 30 days, we'll get an alert and uh, uh, we'll get to buy. So let's check out the cannabis sector. Uh, 420 is coming up and I do think these charts are poised either for a massive breakdown uh, or for a reversal. So we'll take a look at CGC, the leader in the space. Um, as you can see, we're in this really, you know, we are in an ascending channel going back to the March lows. So this is in a longer term uptrend. Uh, we are in the context here. Um, contextually looks like a falling wedge, right? But really what, what's happening is just the moving averages are, are allowing uh, this initial move we're digesting this initial move. We're allowing these moving averages to go sideways, uh, get closer to each other like they were back here before they started this explosive move. So I'm expecting something similar to happen here. Uh, the PPO has reset. Uh, the question is, are they gonna be able to put in a higher low relative to negative 18? Uh, right now they're at negative six. So we'll have to take a look and see. I could see them coming back in, in some breakdown function here. And, and tagging this blue line, uh, 23, 24 bucks. That could certainly happen in the coming weeks. Uh, I do also understand that this thing has now essentially gone straight down uh, for over two months and we are at a 51% decline. I do re recognize the symmetry of this move here. Uh, this, this zigzag is not lost on me. Uh, these are my favorite patterns, you know, and did that just complete on Friday? It's certainly possible that it did. Um, and this would be your WXY pattern or just the double zigzag. Um, 
that's kind of how I how I see this. Either way, it's enough to just scare everyone out of this sector. Um, and from a trend following standpoint, right? We're coming back in to tag the 200, and we haven't tagged the 200 in quite some time. Uh, and generally speaking, stocks that uh, come back into uh, the 200 on the weekly, the 50 on the weekly, when they're sloping up like this on declining volume after setting a new 52 week high. Uh, this is like the 10th or 11th week now in a row. We're declining. We are heading back towards the zero line. PPO is is resetting, which is what we want to see. Uh, the volume is tapering off, which is what we want to see. Uh, but we do need to see a sign and signal of a trend change. At this point, she's still in free fall mode, and she could continue to fall all the way down to 18 bucks. There's nothing that says that can't happen. Uh, what we need to see is a reversal sign right uh, an outside candle that's uh, confirmed in the uh, the following week uh, a bullish engulfing candle maybe a gap and go type of situation some big lower wick this coming week and a reversal closing above 28 29 bucks um, maybe just a doji down here uh, and then we break above and close above the following week uh, either way until something like that happens the trend is down and the best thing to do is to just be very cautious if you're currently in this trade uh, or uh, be conservative with your entries um, because as you can see that you, you really haven't missed anything right you could have got in here at, at 28.18 and that would have been a great buy back in march 5th but i mean look at the opportunity cost you've just gone sideways so you know just just remember that there, there will be a move 420 is is uh on tuesday uh, and there's generally lots of uh, buzz around the sector during that time. So, you know, even if we do get a move, in order for me to get excited, we got to get above the 20 period moving average on the daily. Right now, that's at 30 bucks and 50 cents. Uh, we ultimately have to then get above 32.15, then base and flag. Um, and ultimately, it would look something like this. And that would be the end of, of, of the move uh, back into this gap, maybe, uh, or even just 40, 42 bucks. Um, yeah, so that's that's best case scenario for the bulls. Uh, wor worst case scenario for the bulls, uh, best case scenario for the bears. Is that, you know, this is a one, this is a two, this is a three, this is a four. We're coming down here sometime in the middle of, of uh, July when no one wants to buy pot stocks anyways. So those are the two outcomes really from a bullish and bearish perspective. Uh, we'll take a look at CrowdStrike, one of my favorite uh, software as a service companies. Uh, they focus in AI um, as it relates to cybersecurity. So awesome tech, great company. Um, Back above all the moving averages on the daily, definitely put in a zigzag. Um, this is not a descending triangle. Um, I mean, at least we don't think it is, right? Definitely not. This is certainly a zigzag. And then we did put in a one, two, and we're looking on a, a wave three right now to get back up and set a new all time high. Uh, that might be though, the end of this move. Um, it's not lost on me that you know, we are starting to see the PPO curl down. It is at 20 uh, and now back down to seven. So maybe has to get all the way to zero. I love to see these PPO indicators come back down to zero. Um, I also love to see the symmetry of these moves come back down, break the A low, right? Scare everyone out and then start the next leg higher. Um, so this week for NVIDIA, I would be a buyer into the $200 level. And you, you just have to start taking profit the closer you get to 239, 240. Let's take a look at NVIDIA, one of my favorite companies. Uh, this one's just been playing out perfectly from a, a textbook standpoint. We had a beautiful um, ABC flat. Uh, we can turn off all the indicators, it gets pretty loud. 
Uh, also, balance rules apply, right? This huge area of consolidation going back to September. And what I love about this pattern is they just break the 468 low, close below, right? Just to fool everyone. Uh, this is why I often say you need two closes below a key level to uh, invalidate. So if you're playing the daily chart here, you would want to see two closes below 468.19. In this instance, you got one. They then reversed, closed above the high of 498. Right? They closed that day at 500, which was very important. It signaled a reversal. Uh, when you have a look below and fail, the target for this becomes uh, the top of the balance area, which was 589. Um, we are still searching for a wave three. Um, right now, this guy is mean, could be putting in a wave five top. Um, don't really know, don't really care. I don't like to think like that. I just like to play the trend in front of me. Right now, all the moving averages reset. PPO went way negative. Now we're back above, broke any bearish divergence we had back above blue way above the red the space between the two is about two so you can see that the bulls really do have momentum so what this means for me coming into the week i am a buyer of nvidia anywhere into the sma 10 right ideally she stays above 614 the entire week where are we looking for a top it's tough um this particular chart you know has this big old balance area and when these things go sideways for a long period of time um it puts the probability of hitting the upper end of this of this uh 737 740. so that that's my upper end target um the closer we get to 614 the more i want to buy her and that's kind of how it's going to be this whole week the closer we get to 650 700 uh the more i want to sell her uh, let's take a look at one other stock here, one other trade idea, um, Airbnb. So this one's getting very, very tight. Um, we do have a leading diagonal one, uh, zigzag, ABC down. Is this a two or do we need to see uh, an ABC come down and break the 161.90 and complete some flag, uh, sorry, so, uh, some bull flag and some flat uh, pattern. So let's let's clear some of this up so we can make it uh, a little bit easier to see. Uh, we're certainly in a falling wedge. She's trying to break. Um, but the reality is she could come all the way back up even into this and then come come lower like that. And break 161.90. This completes the flat. Uh, the reason I want to bring up uh, this particular fib tool here is to show you if you take the high and the low, you can see we retraced 90%. So 90% is indicative of a flat, right? Wave B. So this would make this a B, not a 1. It would make this an A not a two make that RC so one a B C two and then we start our wave three into the recovery into summer into travel leisure trade this is my uh, big big you know trade idea for uh, 20 uh, the fall of, of, of 2021 and into 2022 this thing could climax around Christmas time uh, and the final stock and sector we'll cover is the gold space. Uh, this is GDX. We might have a breakout. It's really, really hard to look at it any other way. We've recaptured almost all the moving averages. The 200 is the final line in the sand. So this week, how price reacts to 37.29 will be very telling. Um, from a buyer, standpoint i would love her around 35 dollars right around 35 if you can get 35 on gdx this week that's a buy uh from a technical standpoint this weekly chart is as beautiful as it gets 
Uh, we have a bull flag structure, very obvious structure. PPO reset all the way to the zero line, went negative, and is now crossing above. So you now have blue back above the red. You've exhausted all sellers, and the buyers are gaining control of the price action again. And this is exactly what we want to see. I was a buyer heavily at 3182 uh, and 3250. Any anything back into $35, even if they let you get in with a tag at the SMA 20 at around 30, 3450, would be just a gift. I really doubt it. Uh, best case scenario for a bull this week would likely be $35. Uh, that being said, we, we are expecting sellers at 37 and a quarter. So if they gap up on Monday, I would be selling at that level, looking to buy back at 35. Those are the two levels we'll be playing GDX off of this week. Uh, and I guess we'll talk about Riot. Bitcoin, everyone loves Bitcoin. So we'll pull up Riot real quick. Um, this is a textbook triangle. I am in this trade. Uh, we do want to see this 39.13 level hold, if this breaks, that's my stop. So there's no reason to remain in this trade if 39.13 breaks. As of Friday's close, that is 12, 11, 12% 12 from risk. So size accordingly. Uh, you have to be comfortable letting this price come down a little bit, little bit lower. Ultimately, before the final wave five impulse march up to $82, uh, $90 and 107 as the final profit targets. And if we get invalidated, 39.13 breaks, uh, we will look for continued pressure in, in Bitcoin. So that concludes the video. If you uh, enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and check in for more videos later in the week. Talk to you guys later.